my daughter's going to be born in two and a half weeks. I need to go like meet her and try to bring her home. Growing your family through surrogacy is really complicated and doing it in the middle of a global pandemic is exceptionally difficult. Right now I'm in Kiev, Ukraine. I guess I'm bribing some government official to like process paperwork. I don't even know. How are we gonna get you into the country? What if the baby gets sick? What if the surrogate mother gets sick? How do we now solve this much more complicated problem? Like when this baby's born, I feel like I'm gonna like flip over the coffee table and I'll probably lock myself out of my apartment. Boom, four days left on my quarantine. I'm very tired. This is probably a terrible idea. Every good project has a cool code name. I decided to call it Operation Independence Day. Like if I'm not back by the 4th of July, then like that just sucks. So we were planning for my daughter to be born via surrogate in Ukraine and COVID hit and changed everything. They'd closed international borders. That was the, the moment that we were really just like, oh my God, how are we gonna get into the country? My wife still has health challenges and the potential of being like exposed to coronavirus is very scary. So once we decided that I was gonna go by myself, we had to come up with a plan. The plan was to fly to Minsk, have a driver drive you to the Belarusian-Ukrainian border, get out of the car, walk for what is about three quarters of a mile through two, three major like immigration military gates, get a new driver to take you the rest of the way to Kiev. Well, that's going to be really hard. We got wind that a Ukrainian national airline company was making flights to bring Ukrainian nationals home was able to get support from empathetic people to add me to the passenger list of this flight. I bought a ticket from Paris to Kiev. I learned that I'm only allowed to take carry-on luggage. And we're just like throwing stuff out. And that felt painful. Lo and behold, I found a flight that was going from Zurich to Kiev. I've been in Kiev for 14 days. I still feel like I'm only 20% of the way through this story. There's so much more that's gonna happen next week. Here we go. Time for another selfie check-in. What do you think? This guy loves quarantining. Uh, my quarantine ended today and I walked for two miles to get to a baby store. Look at these freaking cute baby booties. My husband and I make a great team. We're very clear about what we want in life and we're planners. Our first son was born via surrogate in um, Delhi, India. My entire life, I've always wanted to be a father. I think I've always been very dad-like in my jokes. <laughs> My wife had just some health issues that basically made sort of the traditional path to parenthood not possible. So I actually was quite sick for a long time. It became like clear that I wasn't going to be able to have my own or carry my own children. And that's really when Ryan and I started talking about, well, what, what are our actual options here? There's a lot of perception that surrogacy is this very negative, exploitative process. It's typically like wealthier people who are going through the process. And I think that's true because it is expensive. We definitely looked into adoption and the information that we got. It would take an unpredictable amount of time with an unpredictable amount of cost. Going through Ukraine looked like a much more predictable path, but global pandemics are hard to predict. Just got word that um, baby girl was born. Everyone is doing okay. I'm just waiting for the taxi right now to take me to the hospital to meet baby girl. First time I've been in a car in three weeks. The baby is healthy, the surrogate mother is, is healthy, and our baby weighs 10 pounds. It's just a crazy feeling. Say hi to your mom. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. 
Mama loves you. Yeah, hiccups. <laughs> bring her close. Can you bring her even a little closer? I just want to see her little face. Oh, hi, Andy. Are you having an adventure? Not being able to be there for our daughter's birth is so heartbreaking. I feel like I'm not going to be able to officially be her parent until she's in my arms. But there's also kind of this other side, which is just how strong he is and how strong we are as a family. That makes me proud, so. I've been in Ukraine now for six, this is week six, um, which is just such a long time. And it's it's really lonely here. <laughs> Usually there's like a 30 minute period of time every day where, you know, things fall off the rails. Usually it's Indy who's crying. Um, sometimes it's me. It's, it's emotional. It's honestly hard to know if it's just pure sleep deprivation or if it's just pure joy. I know it's a concoction of the two of them that just messes with your brain and your heart. If I'm not back by the 4th of July, then like, that just sucks. Anyway, we are at the part of the journey where we're really trying to get everything in order to make it back home. We need to get all the paperwork in order so that Ukraine allows us to leave. And we have to get a passport together so that Indy is allowed to enter the United States. There's not like good process around like releasing babies to just fathers when the you know mom is absent. And so it requires some extra paperwork, requires some extra understanding. The plane takes off in now less than 48 hours. Still don't have the birth certificate, still don't have the passport. And so tomorrow is this really important day. A miracle could happen. We have somehow miraculously gotten the birth certificate at the very last moment. Message Megan. I'm like, we got the birth certificate. We are going to get the passport right now, but I urgently need a translation of it. And she was like, don't worry, I'm on it. Snap of a finger. I get these like two wonderful translated birth certificates in my email. I forward them onto the embassy. They say, looks great. We are on our way to the US embassy to get India passport. I'm here at the embassy. We just drove up, crazy day. Are those tears or tears of joy? Because we're going home. We're going home. We're going home. Who's coming home tomorrow? Daddy and baby sister and daddy. Indomari, you are quite the little project. We wanted you so bad. Dad went on this insane adventure around the world alone. There's nothing that we want more than to have you and have you home and to be a family of four. People throw around the expression that you'd go to the end of the world for someone. And for me, like very quite literally, I would go to the end of the world for my daughter. So maybe we're gonna do a little, little manicure here. Yeah? What do you think about that? I'll take that yawn as an emphatic yes. <laughs> 